And it's something that's very common. A lot of people know it, but I don't know if we scripturally know uh, what it means to have a, you know, a right relationship with God. You know, um, here, here is what really got my mind thinking. I, thought, I started thinking about principle 7 and step number 11. And no, principle 7 says this, Reserve a daily time with God for self-examination, Bible reading and prayer in order to know God and His will for my life to gain the power to follow His will. You see, it's one thing to we have God's will, and remember Sunday morning. If you don't remember Sunday morning, you can watch it if you can stand it. But but this is God's will, okay? But we need to we want to gain the strength to follow this will, and 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 hey, buddy. Uh, but we want to gain the strength. I can't help it, man. I'm just drawing the kids. But, but we want to gain the strength to do that. But this number 11 says, yes, we thought, sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God, praying only for knowledge of His will for us and the power to carry it out. The power to follow His will, the power to carry it out. So how do we do that? Colossians 3.16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. That's how you do it. So I, here, here's my focus tonight. Finding God's favor for your life. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm in my quiet time. I'm spending time in Joseph. And it says that, that Joseph had found favor with men. Joseph found favor with God. And all through the Scripture, he begins to talk about that. But here's the question. Look at in Genesis 39, verses 1 and 2. Blessed is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors. For whoever finds me finds what? Are you looking at your guide? Life. life. Finds life and obtains what? Favor. Favor from God. All through the Scripture, if you look up how many verses mentions favor, every, every born-again believer is supposed to have favor with God. Every born-again believer is supposed to have favor with God. So I want to ask you this question. What do you think favor is? What is, what is, what is it to have favor with God? Blessing, peace, joy. And, and Jesus answers, yep, you're right. You're dead on. Do what? Obedience, yes. Favor. Favor. Anyone else? What does it mean to have favor? If you have favor with God, and everybody in here that's walking uprightly, that's walking right with God, you have been commanded to have favor with God. The God of what? God's blessing. Oh, that's good. And that's true. And we're going to see that here in just a minute. God's blessing. Do what? To take part of. That's good. That's good. Having enough. Having enough. Right. Right. And having enough. Having all of God. When you're saved, you get all the Holy Spirit that you need right at that time. People talk about being baptized into the Holy Spirit. I've heard that so many times. They say there's a baptism and then there's a baptism of the Holy Spirit. Well, what was you baptized into the first time then? You see that nonsense? When you're baptized and when you, have, when you pray to receive Christ, you receive the power of the Holy Spirit and you get all the Holy Spirit that you need, all you're ever going to have, you have attained everything of the richness of God at the point of redemption. The question is, did you truly get saved and are you truly redeemed? Okay? I was going to ask my leaders this. All the leaders of, you, of our Celebrate Recovery is God's Word as fresh to you today as it was the first, the first meeting of Celebrate Recovery? Why? Do what? Why? Uh, duh. <laughs> but, but yeah, but why, how, what caused us to grow? 
It's ever-changing, but, but once you step out and start taking ownership of something, you can't help but grow spiritually because you would have never t- stepped out of the boat if you had never had something inside of you that was driving you. God's favor, the word ratson, it's a Hebrew word, and it means acceptable or to delight. But here is something, you know, we talk about divine appointments. Friend, when you have favor with God, you are a divine appointment. We, when people come in contact with us, we, <clears throat> the people when, and that's why it's so important for us when we come in here and we have so many of our people that come visit, celebrate recovery, and they're searching for something. And I'm going to tell you something. Uh, so people come and searching for something, they ain't going to find nothing with a bunch of sour pusses. Amen? Yeah. They're not. When was the last time you went to people that didn't smile in church and you went back? You won't. There's no joy. There's no excitement. There's, there's nothing. We are, we are supposed to be a divine appointment. When, when, and, and are, do we always feel like we're divine? No. Do we feel like that we always, do we always feel good? Are we always emotionally in, involved? No. Sometimes I don't feel right. Sometimes I don't feel like hugging somebody. Sometimes I don't feel like talking to somebody. But that doesn't mean I still can't have a divine encounter. That's when you grow spiritually to the place. Well, here is a great example of that, the life of Joseph. The life of Joseph is a perfect example. And some things that I found, some promises and some encouragement I want to give you tonight. In Genesis chapter 39 is is where we're going to be looking at. Proverbs chapter 8, verses 34 and 35. That was a scripture I read to you a while ago. But there there are so many scriptures about God's favor. And when people have God's favor, there's one scripture that I was reading, but when you find God's favor, you cannot handle the wicked of man. You, you, you just can't, you, it, it, it just makes you sick because of that favor that's in your life. And what that does, it kind of shows us the intent. Joseph, it's in verse 39, verse 1, it says, Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt, and Potiphar an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him for the Ishmaelites who had taken him down there. Now listen to this in verse 2. The Lord was with Joseph, and he was a successful man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptians. The, 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 the Lord was with Joseph. Here's, here's the thing I want you to realize. When God saved you, he wants to bless you. I'm not being Joel Olstein up here. If you, if you don't live like you're a blessing, you're not going to receive one. You, you, that, that's foolishness. You know, when you go out those doors, ever how you live, that determines whether or not you sit in this church with a blessing or not. What you do in here, you know, everybody can come to church and, and be what we're supposed to. But when we go out there, that is the true test of whether or not we have favor with God. Man, we can shout to the songs, and we can raise our hands, and we can do that. But when we go out there, we receive our blessings because some of our blessings are the way people respond to us, or the way people look up to us, or the way people say, man, you know, uh, just like the, the testimony about the, uh, the Sequoia tribe that we heard Sunday night. Like, that, everything that, that, that happened, and three years later, and then they seen what we was doing, they said, we want to be a part of what you're doing. Guys, there's people that, that, that sit and watch, and I promise you, when you hear all these good, and this is, amen. There, there is these, and, and I must be honest, okay? Let's just be honest. Celebrate Recovery Wednesday night. It's just a town for honesty. If you believe that, say amen. I just got to be honest, okay? But there's a lot of people that's known what's going on in Union 3 for the past four years. They're just waiting on us to mess up. All churches do. Man, does it, don't, don't the wheels always run off? Can you say that you have favor with God if you think that way? We can never think that way. We can never allow ourselves to say, well, I'm doing good until I mess up. You, when you have fa- favor with God, you are who you are. If I mess up, I'm still going to be who I am. If, 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 my, if, 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 I, if my circumstances change, I'm still going to be who I am. If, it, it doesn't matter. Listen to this. The Lord wants to bless you. And, and, and it said the Lord was with Joseph. How do, I, how do you experience God's favor in your life? That's a good question. Amen? 
We'd love to know that, wouldn't we? Yeah, but I can tell you how Joseph did, even though he was put in the well, he sold to slavery. Don't preach my message that book. <laughs> <laughs> he kept on doing what he was supposed to do. Therefore. Amen. I'm going to give the invitation. <laughs> but that's so true. Now, how many Baptists have you ever met done that? Stop focusing on being Baptist and start focusing on being holy. Guys, you're not going to heaven because of your denomination. You're going to heaven because of your Savior. Okay? We need, to, we need to realize sometimes claiming God's dream may cause you to be put in a well. You share, you share the dream. Hey, God, I'm so excited. Man, God showed me this, Jay. Man, I'm just so excited. I want to go to Peru. Well, we ain't got no business down there in Peru. Man, God, I'm so excited. God wants me to talk to the people I work with. Well, I'm sorry, honey, but you can't be sharing that stuff at work. No, that's right. We'll wait till she commits suicide, and then we'll go to the, to the funeral. You see, so many times, when, you have a, when God gives you a dream, you're going to be put, your circumstances are going to change because of the people who's never had one. Those things are going to happen. The Lord still wants you to be a blessing. Those things are happening to you, and the, the people, maybe even the person you live with, or your family, or your friends, and they're not going to understand why and what has happened to you. But that shouldn't change your excitement and your passion. Listen to this. Sometimes, it says in verse 2, he succeeded in everything he did. Why? Because the Lord was with him. The Lord blessed him. He had God's favor on his life. Friend, when you have God's favor in your life, everything you do is going to succeed. Everything you touch is going to grow. The key to being the pastor of a growing church is just how favor with God. You can't have favor with God if you're trying to do what man told you to do. You have to do what God tells you to do, even when man does not understand. And sometimes when you're in a leadership and you do only what God tells you to do, people try to put you in a well. I'm going to sell you for slavery. That's exactly what's going on in Joseph's life. God's favor is still the proof of a life totally surrendered to God. That's what God's favor is. You're going to be surrendered. I, I, surrender happened when I was saved. Nothing's ever going to change with that. And it shows us in verses 3 through 5 of Genesis, it says, And his master saw the Lord was with him. When your friends, people have come to celebrate recovery, and, and who was it? Who was it that shared that testimony? Um, uh, uh, right here. Your name again. Jessica. Jessica. How could I not remember that name? Uh, Jessica, but your testimony that you shared when you did five stars and you showed on our Union 3 page, I read that and it blessed me tremendously. I appreciate you sharing that. And if you haven't had a chance to read her testimony just briefly of what she shared, I want to encourage you to go read that. You never know who is watching. You never know who's here tonight. And okay, God, I'm going to give you one more chance. You see, when we have favor with God, you never know who's watching. And, 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 and right here, they watched him. They watched his life. Verse, so Joseph found favor in his sight, in verse 4, and served him. Then he made him overseer of his house and all that he, had, he put under his authority. You see how God blessed him? Man, you want a job? You want to you have something one day? Then you stop worrying about the person you're going to spend the rest of your life with unless God sends them in your life. Okay? God sends them in your life. You see, this is why this is so important. You want God's favor. You want to make God's decision. That means you become a divine encounter yourself because you've had one. He, uh, when God's favor is on your life, it will also be a blessing to those around you. What does that mean? That means just because of your relationship with God, your husband or your wife's going to be blessed, your children's going to be blessed. And I'm going to tell you something. You can tell the difference of a home that has the blood of Jesus over it. And when people live inside, there's just peace in the house. Amen? Does it mean everything's all together? Does it mean the laundry's always done? Does it mean there's no dishes in the sink? Boy, don't be hiding your face, Jessica. 
Does it, does, it, does it mean all of those things? No, it doesn't mean all those things. It just means that love carries the home. Amen? Guys, by having favor with God means that you are loved by agape love. That you have something that you don't have to search for approving anymore. That you don't have to search that you have these things. And number two, not only that, but here's another thing. The Lord wants to bless you, and the enemy wants to trap you. How are we to use God's favor? When you have God's favor, how does God want you to use that? Bless to bless others? What else? When you have God's favor on your life, what is the greatest, what, what does he want you to use that favor to do? Bless others? Anybody have anything else? To praise him? That's good. That's good. What else? Lead others to Him. That's good. That's good. What else? When we, when, when, remember, in this house, and, in, and, and where He is, He is in Potiphar's house. And He has a, there's a wife there. There's a lady there. And this, this cat, he's, Joseph's a very good looking man. Man, he's, he, he's, and, and so she, she, and when you look at the scripture, it doesn't, it cuts right to the chase. And uh, it's verse 7, and it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast him longing eyes on Joseph, and she said, lie with me, but he refused. God gave you favor so you could stand against sin. Most, most men in America today can't have a marriage that God give them because they're addicted to pornography. Most men today don't even know how to treat a woman because all he's ever done is look at a picture all of his life. And he's lusting instead of loving. And when lust is in your heart, you don't even know how to say that. You can't, you can't. Do you know that when you look at one picture, that it stays in your mind for seven years? For seven years, you cannot get that out. It controls how you think and and and. Some of these guys, I tell you, sometimes I've met with people and I can just about have a conversation and I can just about tell you what their struggle is. How do you know? I just, I ask them the question. This is your struggle, isn't it? Yeah, how'd you know? You can just tell. You see, the enemy wants to trap you. He wants to get you trapped by your own desires. He wants to get you trapped in a way that you think, okay, well, you've got it made. And, and, and look, he refused in verse 8 to be trapped. He refused. Church, that's what you do. God's favor will not come until testing does. You're going to be tested. As soon as you pray and invite Jesus Christ in your heart and life, the reason so many people go and don't come back, because you're going to be tested right when you're, when you're saved. You're going to be tested. The enemy wasn't even after you until you prayed to receive Christ or supposedly prayed to receive Christ. Until you start seeing Jesus as Savior, the enemy ain't even been messing with you. Everything that's wrong in your life, you did. See, the devil had already robbed you of heaven. He wasn't trying to rob you of heaven. He had already, he had already accomplished that. When a lost man, he's already lost. I mean, that, that's, that's the battle. But the moment that you're starting to be drawn by God, the moment God starts dealing with your heart, the moment that the enemy and the demons begin to see you respond or pick up your Bible and say, I've never read this, but I'm going to try. The moment that happens, brother, there is an enemy that's waiting to trap you. He knows exactly what you've been looking at the past two years. He knows exactly the conversations. He knows the kind of people you've been hanging out with. He knows exactly the right, the, the right drug dealer to send your way. He knows exactly the right package store to send you by. He knows exactly the right thing to do. He knows exactly how to trap you. And most of the disasters that happen in their life, we can follow this trail of sin right in our life. He, Joseph was not caught in that trap. He had this, he was, he, he had the favor of God was on his life. But friend, when you have the favor of God on your life, you have a bullseye on your back. God, God, God gives us and he blesses us, but this is what it is. Joey, I'm going to save you, but now it's up to you to do something with it. 
I've gave you, I placed my power inside of you, and now you have the fruits, so you have these gifts that I've given you. Now you need to use them. You need to learn how to use them. You do this. And so I begin to learn, and I be, you know what I do with these gifts, with these fruits? I learn how to beat up the enemy. I go after him before he comes after me. I make sure that he doesn't have, he, he's not going to sneak around. He's, he's not going to do that. I know my weaknesses and I protect myself from my weaknesses. I protect myself. I guard my testimony. The, enemies will, the enemy will always try to rob you of what God has given you. Isn't that exactly what's going on with Joseph right now? He's been put in a well. Isn't that bad enough? Then he gets a little bit of hope and they sell him into slavery. He goes, now he's over the whole man's household. Things are going good and pow, there's the enemy right again. Just knocks him right back down to his feet. How many, about the time you get up, you get knocked back down again? And by the time you get up, you get knocked back down again. You know why? Because the devil's using the same stick to knock you over and over and over again. But sometimes he gets a different stick, doesn't he? He's not trying, if you're genuinely saved... He's not, he knows by knocking you down, he can't take your eternity away from you. But he can take it away from your kids. He can take it away from the person sitting beside you. You feel the weight of that? You see, there's so much at stake. Finding God's favor. God's favor is His protection in our life. To the law, sin has already robbed you of a life that God can give you. Because that's that, to, be, to, be, to, to all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Until a person is redeemed, until they've repented of sin, they're, they're, they're lost. They're, it's, it's in their future. But the good thing about that is, is we get to show the proof that God can do something amazing. Joseph was showing the proof to these people, to Pharaoh and to Potiphar and all these people. There is a God, the God of Israel. The God, the, he, there is a Jehovah God. There is one God, one way, one truth, and one life. He is showing this to them. He, 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 he is living this. Listen, when it tries to strip you of your garment... You never let it rob you of God's favor. It said that she went, and when he tried to flee, she grabbed the very shirt off his, off the, the, the very cloak off of him, and she grabbed it, and she took that as evidence uh, to him and said, You see? You see? He was here. You see? He did this. You see? He is guilty. He's guilty. And he was as innocent as he could be. Church, listen to me. And I'm speaking, your pastor's speaking right now. I don't have to be guilty. All I have to do is be accused. Sometimes people don't understand why I'm so disciplined and why I'm so, so the way I am because I know that where we are right now, there is demons encamped around this 82 acres just waiting to destroy the lives of every one of our sheep. He's waiting to attack, for he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He wants to attack you and destroy you in three different ways. And I know that. That's why we have to be very intentional in what we do. Just Joseph went from being a blessing in Potiphar's court to being a blessing in prison. <laughs> huh? Let me ask you a question. I have this in my notes, and I don't want to repeat it. If, if, if somebody came... And I preached on homosexuality Sunday morning, and they put it on YouTube. And let's just say they come and they go put me in jail. What's going to happen to that jailhouse because your pastor goes in there? <laughs> There's going to be more baptisms in Etowah County Jail than any church has ever seen. So if I get put in there, leave me in there for a little while. At least let me win some people to Jesus. And then you come on. But I'm going to tell you something. I know you're Connie, Connie's back there. No, no, no. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. You go and put Paul in prison. What happens? Every man they chained to him. They had to rotate out the guards because he kept leading them to Jesus. It does not. When you're, when you're saved, it doesn't matter who, where you go. 
where you are, you're going to have God's favor on your life. Church, that's what genuine salvation is. You have God's favor on your life. You go visit your family for Christmas, you have God's favor on your life. When you go take that job and you're working in this place and everybody is using this language that you're just having a hard time with, anybody know what I'm talking about? You're working in this place and every time you turn around, you hear these words, you just want to turn, shut up! Man, I don't want to hear this stuff. But it doesn't change you. It just makes you cringe to hear those things. Church, I know sometimes as you grow, and I know this is going to be a pretty straightforward statement, but Christians that turn around and sit and run their mouth and cuss, you didn't meet the same Jesus I did. That's messed up. Can someone with God's favor on their life use words like that? You see, that's this, this, God, when we start thinking this way about ourselves and about God's favor, it helps us to be accountable to who we are and what we have. Joseph went from being a blessing to, 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 to finding God's favor. And, 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 and listen to this, when we are who we are, it will not change because of our circumstances. When we are who we are. And church, I'm going to tell you something. Now listen to me. Man, you're doing good for a little while, and then you sink for a little while. You're doing good for a little while, you're doing good. Are you a new creation in Christ, or are you not? You can still be a new creation and struggle. Amen? What is your struggle as a new creation? Oh, that's good. Okay, I'm believing that I'm a new creation. What's another struggle as a new creation? You've been saved six months. What is your, one is one of the greatest struggles as a new creation? Can't do it alone. What else? Huh? Changing the environment around you. That's good. What else? Learning being discipled. What is that? Obedience. That's right. You see, when, when you have God's favor in your life, when, you, when, 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 you, when you're putting, when God saves us and we become this new creation, we still got to go back to the same place the day before that we was an old creation. We've still got the reminders and we've still got the habits and we've still got the, the fights and we've still got all the things that's there. Now, how, God, how do you clean this mess up? What do we do? God's favor does that. You see, God's going to show these tests, and all through his life, it says, and all through Joseph, right in this verse 39, verse 40, I mean, chapter 39, chapter 40, and chapter 41, he is just continuously being tested, continuously. And, and if you'll look, and, and so many times in this, it says that, that he always gave God the credit. He didn't try to take the credit. God's favor on your life will never try to take the credit of something God's done. Joseph said, listen, I can't interpret a dream, but the God can. So many times he did this because they were beginning to look up at him. Why is that so important? If you're someone, you have the favor of God on your life, and you have a son that's eight years old, and he thinks that you can take the moon and you can tie a rope around it and pull it a little closer. Or he thinks that you can put a star in a different place and put his name on it. Why is it important for that young man to know that the special qualities about you, you didn't do, God did? It's important for us to know that, is it not? You see, God, God the enemy wants to trap you. The enemy may cause it, but my God allows it. Why? Why did his favor, why, why didn't Joseph's favor leave him? I mean, didn't he have a right to get angry? Didn't he have a right? Why didn't his favor, he was put in prison, he was in chains. You let somebody here and you're innocent, but you get put in prison. You don't have to be guilty, you're just accused. Right? If you're not careful, all of that accusation can change you. If it changes you too much, you lose that favor. 
Why did it not change his favor? Because he was always innocent. Church, when you are innocent and you're genuine in God's house, I'm fixing to tell on some people. The people who always get their feelings hurt in church are always the people who are guilty of hidden sin. Every time. Because when you're innocent, you will not allow nothing to rob you of the favor of God. You will protect it. And sometimes when we, when we get so guarded, or people get so touchy and touchy about things, it's because we have some struggles in our life that we're not talking anything about. What Jessica and Lynn and them is telling you about these step studies, ladies, there's some ladies in here, you need to go through a step study. You need to spend, well, I don't want everybody knowing my business. Everybody doesn't know your business. You have trusted people that are sitting there with experience that are trying to help you. And you've seen these people that's coming up and getting these chips. And there's been people that's been going through this for years, and it's changed their life. And our men, man, our, our men, you, you really need to step up. Man, there's some things, there's some things in our life that we need to be looking at and, and spending time and going through step studies. And, 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 and it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, like discipleship, but what they're all it's trying to do is guard the favor of God on your life. That's it. God, show me how to protect myself from denial. God, show me how to protect myself from uh, accusation. Show me how to protect myself when people come and throw me in a well and want to sell me to the next slave traders that come along. Show me how to do this. And when God, they teach you how to do that, those slave traders and the, and the circumstances in your life that you didn't think you deserved and I shouldn't be here and I'm innocent, but the next thing you know, you're second in command of all of Egypt. God allowed that in Joseph's life so that he could set him up to save a nation from starvation. Why did that happen to him? Because God loved that nation just as much as he loved Joseph. Amen? You know, God loves your family just as much as he loves you. God loves the lost people that's hurting in our community just as much as he loves us. But who is God more focused on today? I haven't read too much in Scripture where it leads you to, well, the, the laborers are few. The harvest is, is there, there, there's, a, there's a big harvest out there, but the laborers are few. You've heard that? Is that? That's right, but is it talking about in here? When was the last time you've seen a wheat field in a church? Last time I read, the problem in church was tares, not wheat. Right? The field is out there. We're supposed to go out to the fields. We're supposed to go to the field. We're supposed to become strong enough and have God's favor in our life. So God's favor in your life allows you to go walk in the field, but the tares can't pull you down. You see, that's, that's why. So and don't let the enemy trap you. Joseph was totally innocent. Never let the world... This is... It's something God spoke to my heart. Never let the world tame the passion of the gospel inside of you. Never let the world tame the passion of the gospel inside of you. Last thing. The enemy, the Lord wants to bless you. The enemy wants to trap you. And the king wants to use you. You know, how are we to use God's favor? Well, here we see... That, that Joseph, he, he goes in, in 41, and it's, it's 41. He then Pharaoh said to him, See, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. The gift of God gave to Joseph is what had caused all this trouble. Is it not? God gave Joseph a gift, and it caused all of this trouble. It all goes back to him as a teenage boy. How much time has went by? Well, if you look on down in verse 46, it says he was 30 years old. So let's just assume that at the age that he was thrown in the well, he was 15 years old. That means that at 15, there's been 15 years of being left in a well, being accused, being put in a prison. 15 years. Hear me, I know how long 15 years is. 15 years is a long time. Amen? 15 years to be treated that way. Now, the gift God gave him was going to reveal his destiny. 
The same gift that caused him to have the trouble is the same gift that God used to give his destiny. Friend, I'm going to tell you something. When you mature in your life, you're going to find out that when you're newly and you're a new Christian, you're going to have a lot of friction. I watch people water down their faith all the time just because they don't want to stir the water. Well, praise God, if you didn't want to stir the water, then what'd you get saved for? We are supposed to stir the water. We're supposed to challenge. We are supposed to live our faith out loud. We're supposed to quit our addictions. We're supposed to quit our alcohol. We're supposed to stop living the lifestyle that caused us and hurt us and hurt our families. We're supposed to quit it. Stop it. And we can't do that by ourselves. We kind of have somebody with us. Then God takes these same gifts and things that he gave you with, and it's a remarkable. Man, you, you may be great at talking to people, or you may be great with finances, or you may be great at just working with your hands, and you may be the most awesome mechanic that's ever lived. And God's going to take it and open up his destiny for you. That's exactly what he did with Joseph. The king wants to use you. His character was the key to God's favor. I thought about this. His... Uh, he, 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 God's favor was the key to his character, but as also his character was the key to his faith. When he's in a well and it comes along, he never stopped living for God, did he? He never stopped living for God. Not one time. Why? Being in prison is not near as bad as walking away from God. He said, I can do a lot of things, but I, can't stop, I cannot stop being me. And, 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 and he, Joseph never, <laughs> never, he, he, he never took credit. He, 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 he just kept on living. And I love in, um, I think it's uh, 41, 42. There is a scripture. Let me just tell you what it says. I can't, I can't, I, I, he said there's this one place in the scripture. He just says, finally. You know, he had many ups and downs, and finally, finally it got to the place. Man, the cupbearer, you remember the cupbearer? The cupbearer, he interpreted the dream for the two guys that was on Pharaoh's court. He interpreted the dream for him, and he told them exactly what was going to happen. One of them in three days was going to be killed on a pole. The other one in three days was going to be set back up. And, and so when the guy went and he told Pharaoh what happened, he had forgot. He forgot. He forgot Joseph. Joseph's still in prison. You ever feel like you do something right and you do it for you? You just say, man, God's just going to bless me for this. And it's almost like nobody, there's no recognition. There's, everybody just forgot. Nothing happened. Man, everything just kind of started molding. And man, God, what are, what are you, isn't it, isn't it the time to quit? Isn't it the time to quit? But he didn't quit. Because the king had to have a dream. And nobody could interpret this dream except Joseph. So Joseph interprets this dream, and God opened up this. this he, he was, it says that Pharaoh was disturbed by these dreams. And when he, when he became disturbed, he, he, and, and, and so, so because of Joseph did three things in his life, and we're fixing to close. Joseph stood strong through testing. If you want God's favor in your life, you're going to have to stand strong through your testing. The second thing he did is Joseph stayed true to the Father. He never stopped being the man that God asked him to be. If you're, if, if, that is very important. You have to be holy as I am holy. God tells us that. And the last thing is Joseph became second in command. Why? Why was Joseph second in command of all of Egypt? Anybody want to tell me? Huh? Faith? That's right. That's right. I want to say it a little bit more. Just, just, what, why? God, what? God's number one. That's good. All the answers are right. Y'all dead on. Followed all the way through. Who said that? Amen. Followed all the way through. You are listening, man. <laughs> That's good. God's favor. Look at me. 
Joseph became second in command of all of Egypt just because of his love for God. He did. Isn't that agape love, though? When you truly love God, you will not blame Him for your circumstances. God, show me why you're using this. Show me what this storm is for. God, let me come out strong on the other side so when my family, the people I love, go through this storm, I'm going to be a good example of how to finish well. Amen? You see, this is, this is what it's all about. He, 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 he loved God. He didn't love God to be blessed. He was blessed because he loved God. The king, and I love this, said that the king put a ring on his finger. In the scripture, he did. He didn't do it because the ring put a, key, a, a ring on his finger. He did it because God put a crown in his heart. The crown of righteousness. Amen? Let's pray. Father, I love you. I know that if you're watching this right now, that you've watched this message. And uh, God may be speaking to your heart right now. And uh, as powerful as the messages are, and the greatest power is the Word of God. But we just want you to know that God has a plan, a perfect plan for your life. God created a place called heaven for you. Uh, the Bible says the punishment for sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And He has an amazing um, future for you. But sometimes we think that, that, that we can't get there, we don't deserve to get there. I'm going to tell you something, friend. God loves you. He has a plan for your life. Uh, but we can't earn or deserve that. The Bible says the punishment for sin is death, but that gift comes to us because He loves us and He wants us to have that and receive that. And the reason we can't earn it is because the Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. You see, that sin separates us from Him. And it started at creation and it came all the way through. But in my life, in my own life, there's a verse in Proverbs and it says, for there's, there's it's just a way that seems right unto man, but it only leads to death. You know, I had created my own right relationship with God that I could get away with this or get away with that. And, and the Bible says that God is love and He is, but He's also a just God, which means He cannot let one sin die, not one sin. He said, you know, I love, for God so loved the world, and He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him will not, what, perish, but have everlasting life. You see, God said, I'll solve this problem. I'm going to wrap myself in flesh. I'm going to send myself to earth. And I'm going to do something so that they can come back to me. You see, God made a way for you and I to have a personal relationship with Him. Jesus went to Calvary for you. Jesus went to the cross. They put nails in his arms, but in, in, in his wrist and in his feet, but the nails is not what held him there. His love for you is what held him there. You see, there's a lot of people that believe in God. James 2, 19 says, for even the demons believe in God and they tremble. So believing in God, there's more. You need to trust that he came, he lived. He gave his life for you. They put him in a tomb. Three days later, he rose again so that you could be focused on life instead of death. So how do you receive this gift? Well, you need to have faith. Many people have faith. There's different types of faith. There's intellectual faith. And you know God exists, but even the demons know God exists. And there's temporal faith. Temporal faith is like when God looks at us, he can't see us. And just say this is a record of our sin. Well, God can't see us because of our sin. You know, or God can see us. We just can't have a relationship with Him. So we'll make these excuses. Well, God, I promise you I'll turn my life around. Well, we turn our life around. Well, where does our sin go? Well, God, I'll turn over a new leaf. Well, you turn over a new leaf, but where did your sin go? You see, God made a way. 
that we could have a right relationship with Him. And when the Word of God, the Bible says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And as Jesus has spoke, He's elevated. He's not a cross around your neck. He's not a something in your pocket. Jesus is the Savior of the world. He gave His life for you so that He could redeem you. See, the Bible says all that sheep have gone astray, each into his own way. God has laid on him the iniquity of us all. You know what he did with that sin? On Calvary, he said he, he cast as far as the east is from the west. It's no more. You see, being saved is about you having saving faith. That you place your trust completely in the finished work of Jesus Christ. He didn't, he, Jesus never did anything halfway. And everything he truly touched changed. So today, as God's speaking to you, he wants to touch you. So what do you do? The Bible says in Romans 10, 9, if, if you'll believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, the Bible says you will be saved. Acts 16, 31 says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved, you and your household. The Bible also says in Revelation 3, 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice, I will come in and fellowship with him, and he will me. So if right now, if God's speaking to your heart, and in your heart, God is telling you, through the power of his Holy Spirit, he's convicted you of sin and you need to be saved. Then you pray this, Lord Jesus, I repent. I am sorry for my sins. And Lord Jesus, today, I ask you to come into my life and be my Lord and be my Savior. I surrender my life to you and I pray that you'll change me from this day on. Friend, if you prayed that prayer, that's the greatest prayer that you'll ever pray. God will change your life just like he's changed ours. I want to encourage you to find you a Bible believing, preaching church. And I want you to go find that pastor and I want you to tell him that God saved your soul. And I want you to tell him that you want to be a part of that body and be a part of believer's baptism. And baptism is the first thing that you'll ever do to be right in the center of God's will. Thank you for watching, and I pray that you've been blessed. If you have made a decision to trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please contact us and let us know. There are people around the world that are going to pray and receive Christ from watching this. It's not about Union 3. It's about the kingdom of God. And if you've made a decision you go tell three people that you've trusted Jesus and you watch how that influences someone else. And then you let us know, send us a message so that we can continue to pray for you and celebrate with you the amazing decision that you have made. God bless you and thank you for watching.